at bees worldwide, we should all be proactive in helping restore the population. So here with some solutions, gardening expert Frank Ferragini. <laughs> That we yes. have a very good bee garden going on at our house, and the bees love our garden because we listen to you. You know, and that's, you know, I wish everybody was like you. Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> there are, I wish everybody would listen to me, including some of my family members, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, overall, there's not just honeybees. If you think about it in Canada, there's 800 different species of bees. North American wide, 4,000 different varieties and species wow. of bees. So everything from a mason bee, a carpenter bee, some good, some bad, but they're all pollinators. And we know now to make sure that we're gonna sustain food sustainability, we wanna make sure that it's good to be bees. So yes. what are some of the first steps? First step to have a bee-friendly garden is eliminating the use of pesticides and or insecticides. Right. Um, especially something called the neonicotinoid, which is called the okay. neonic. That is a pesticide that's used in a lot of crops. And really what you want to do is to say to your grocer, you want to say to some of those that supply you, do not use neonics. That's the short form. Okay. What it does is confuses the bee. The bee will go, and if it's touched by this insecticide, and bees won't find their way back to the hive. So they'll oh, eventually die. Interesting. Yeah. Would so you, you know that something had neonic in it? or? So what's really great right now is the global population has been fighting against this, that yeah. now there are many, like the EU, European Union, have banned against it. Uh, in Canada, it's been, many of those have been banned, reduced. Mm -hmm. So you do have a voice. And the one of your best voices is your shopping voice. When you stop yes. buying and shopping, then all of a sudden they make changes. And many absolutely. retailers have done that right across Canada and the United States, which is absolutely fantastic. Good. Now okay. when it comes to the garden, itself, yes. what you want to do is you want to create a cornucopia of flowering plants yeah. all the way from early spring all the way through to fall. Got it. So, do you have dandelions in your lawn? Uh, we actually don't because we don't have a lawn. Okay. We just have, <laughs> we have a garden with plants but no lawn. So dandelions apparently don't get rid of all the dandelions. No, because dandelions are an early source of pollen right. for bees. Okay. So if you have a load of dandelions in your lawn, just yeah. say that you love the bees. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so don't get rid of them all. But don't get rid of them all. And think about having bloom periods through your garden that will flower all the way through. So right mm -hmm. now we have a lilac, and the lilac's more early spring blooming. And that yes. lilac, this one here is called bloomerang, which will bloom multiple times. But traditionally, lilacs and spring flowering bulbs, things like that, so you want early spring color. Early so spring. That's going to give, especially on those days when all of a sudden it gets warm, like even the crocus that come out early spring, all that, you know when it gets warm early spring, but there's not a lot of things going on, but all of a sudden the bees, as soon as it gets warm, they're like, party on, let's go, let's go. <laughs> no. Let's and, get this And started. they want to get around. And yeah. the other thing is, is when you're selecting plants, I want to tell you why this coneflower is an excellent example of a plant that's great for bees. Okay. And the reason being, if you look at that flower, it's a nice flat surface and it's easy for the bees to go around and work and get pollen. Some of the doubles, if you were to get like a double petunia, a double impatient, those doubles, not great flowers for bees. Got it. So you want single blooms. Yes. So they're more open in their appearance. Right. And they're way easier. And of course, coneflower, what's great about coneflower is you start in July, and this thing here flowers all the way through, long bloom period, lots of source, and you'll notice the color of honey will change based upon what type of flower the bees are harvesting. Oh, so the really? Bee, yeah, there'll be different colors of different honey based upon the area where those bees are going around. So the flower type actually does affect the honey that is produced. Oh, 100%. That's cool. Now, the other thing I want to really talk about, too, is when it comes to this here, which is a bird bath. Yeah. Do the bees like the bird baths? Bees need a source of water. Okay. So they get thirsty, too. They get thirsty, and it's really important. Mm -hmm. If you are a beekeeper and you want to have a vibrant hive, you want to make sure that you have some ponds or some source of water nice and close to them because they need to drink. Got it. The thing about bees are, is they're like really bad at landing. They're like, <laughs> so, so sometimes they're actually really, if you watch them, you can tease them sometimes. So with this, this bird bath that I have, you can see from Sheridan Nurseries as well. See how this little open area that's here, that is a little landing pad where they can land oh, and they can go. And so even if you don't have that, yeah. even if you have a water pond or a pond, Make sure you have some rocks and things around where okay. they can land. <laughs> right, they it, need some help. Yeah. It's, and look at how happy he is because there's a landing pad. Well, exactly, so right? He's coming down. Loves it. The other thing I want you to do with kids, so yeah. bumblebees. You're, you're familiar with the bumblebee? That's that yes. big, like almost this would appear to look like a bumblebee. That's that big fat bee. Yeah. They're the most passive bees in the world. They're so cool. So if you see okay. them in the garden, 
and they're on a flower that's just kind of working away there. Right. You can actually go to the back of that bumblebee and you can pet its bum. What? Yes. Why would you do that? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's showing them to, you know, it's showing them just Love to en bees. enjoy nature. Right. So bumblebee will never bite you unless you step on it and or sit on it. Okay, right? well, that was going to be my next question yeah. because yeah. people do, uh, most people can't tell the difference between wasps and bees and, and you don't want that thing stinging you. Exactly. But they're not going to, they're not going to try and sting you oh, unless no, you step on it. Bumblebees are so passive. They're just working away. They're like, yeah, man. You go up and you're just like, <laughs> and the bumblebees is what they use in many greenhouses that grow peppers and cucumbers. And the reason why they use them to pollinate that greenhouse is yeah. while people are working in there, the bumblebees, they leave you alone. Oh, okay. So if you're looking for okay. a bee to have some fun with, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, hey, it's Friday night. What's Let's hang out. Let's do it. And finally, what I want to talk about is for late color. So if you're okay. thinking about real late fall color, all the sedums that are out there, and this one here is from Proven Winners, also from Sheridan Nurseries. A yeah. beautiful, beautiful flowering plant, but you look at the amount of top bloom that's just starting to come on here. Yeah. And later season, once we get some frost and things start to die off in your garden, this is still standing there with blooms on those warmer fall days. Yeah. A pollen source for them as well. So really important. Number one, what you want to make sure is reduce the use of pesticides. Number two, a garden that blooms all season. Number three, weeds are okay. Some yeah. flowering weeds are great. And then number four, a water source and boom. You're going to do great things. Now, you've got a gardening center. I'm wondering if you go to a gardening center and you say, listen, I want blooms that bees are going to love, yeah. you can get that advice from them, right? Independent, gonna... garden, independent garden centers right now yeah. are, have a ton. There's a, there's a website called beesmatter.ca. Okay. There's so much information out there. And this, we want bees to be happy. We need them. Yes. And they're only good. And they're good for everybody. Right. Yes. So you should pet their bums. Yes. <laughs> okay? Because they're good. <laughs> pet their bums.